This podcast contains explicit content, language, and sexual situations. It is intended for adults 18 years of age and older. These thoughts and opinions expressed are not those of any specific employer, group, or individual. Fed up with the rat race, we decided to sell everything and move to Cancun, Mexico. Now we do what we love. Work, party, and play in the middle of paradise. After 18 years in the lifestyle, we thought we saw it all, but we were so wrong. So wrong. Oh my God, so wrong. Now we want to share the fun that we get to have every day. So come to room 77. Let's play. All right, I think we started. Okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> but how are you, Lauren? Wow, you're sitting very high up today. <laughs> uh, every time we record, you're doing something different. You. I'm in a new chair but you're, sort of thing. You are. You're not on a chair. You are sitting on a table. You're much okay, but- higher than you normally are. <laughs> so I feel like I'm presenting in Shark Tank. To you. It better be good or I'm out. I will try. <laughs> anyway, welcome back, Lauren. It is so good to talk to you. How are you? I'm a little hot, I got to be honest, but I'm enjoying my chair and I'm ready to go. Well, good for us. This air conditioner in this room is broken. <laughs> That's a true story. Like pretty much everything else. After this, I have to go outside and finish caulking the rest <laughs> of the windows because we had moved from a house that was made out of old colanders <laughs> and moved into an apartment where the walls are made of slotted spoons. <laughs> when the rain came, it was worse than the last place. We were like, oh, no more dealing with that. No more waterfalls. No more waterfalls and Noah's Ark. <laughs> So uh, so there's that. So I, I will be doing that. But I'm glad to hear that you're doing well. Did you say you were doing well? Sure. <laughs> I go. I said I was hot. I got to be honest. I didn't listen to your answer. I know. Listen, I got an agenda here. I got to keep the show moving. <laughs> we are going to Mexico in November. We're going to have a hotel takeover in Playa del Carmen, the way Room 77 does it. Five nights, all inclusive, clothing optional, everything you want on the beach, better than anything you've ever been to before, <laughs> ever. That's what it's Everyone be. gets a plunge pool. I feel like it's Oprah. You get a plunge pool. You get a plunge pool. <laughs> Everyone gets a plunge pool. <laughs> Keep updated on that. If you want to get on that list, there's only about 35 spots, so they are going to go quickly. Make sure to sign up now so that you have a spot. We'll probably start booking those spots next month, but you can get on the list right away. There's a lot of things that we have to talk about, and we talked to another couple, which is coming up later on in the episode where they talk about uh, whoring without one another, basically. Yeah hall passes, which is something we don't really know a lot about. So if you want to know about hall passes, keep listening or just fast forward through this crap (laughs) and go to that section. I don't know where it's going to start because I don't know where this ends. Few updates because I know that our listener is just on the edge of a seat Mm -hmm. driving his car or sitting on the edge of that treadmill or in that tub or on that massage table or flying that plane or in that jail cell, whatever it is they're doing right now, they're waiting for the update. The last time we had talked to everybody, we had been screwed by our partner at the time for the United States events, room77events.com. We had said that that was going to be worked out. It did work out. The Ellis Society, which was the the, the fake company or the, the other company that he had opened up, closed it down. He gave us our money back. He apologized. So that is the end of that. Unfortunately, we lost our partner, but he did make good on everything that he said he would make good on. Uh, We're going to start from scratch, obviously, but we wanted to say that that chapter is finally closed and we will move forward. Woo! As we do, Richard. As we do, Lauren. I'm going to tell you something. Nothing stops us. Nothing. I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. When I was a kid, everybody used to say to me, they say, Richard, you are going to be a complete failure. And you know what? Every one of those people, they were right. But I don't let that stop me. I keep going. Hey, when you did that um, test in high school, what did they say you were going to be? Uh, absent. <laughs> no, that just, kind of test. Oh. The employer test. I remember being really angry at the test, right? That's because funny. I took the test and it told me what I was supposed to be. And I was like, not bad. I was supposed to be an international pop star. Uh. It told me that I should have been a mechanic. Oh. Which I found very insulting at the time. I remember. Super funny. But going through life now, the amount of things that I tinker with and fix is kind of mind boggling. Like my tool set is huge. I love working on things. I love fixing stuff. At the time I wanted to be an actor, but you know what? Did it. Done. <laughs> now I'll go be a mechanic or a podcast host. Who knows? <laughs> Doesn't matter. Podcast host that talks about mechanics. Again. Thank you to all the Patreon people. The Patreon, where do they go? 
uh, patreon.com forward slash room seven seven. We got a lot of Patreons to to shout out in this episode because once again, Richard and Lauren got naked and did fucking on camera. And then they all go and see that. And you're welcome. <laughs> we started a Telegram group for the Patreon. Now the people in Patreon go to this Telegram group. There's over 100 people in there now that are sharing their bits with everyone else. <laughs> yes. Sometimes I have to turn off the notifications because I'm like, hey, Take this to a private chat, people. <laughs> it's really funny. Uh, we want to take a moment in each segment to list the Patreons really quickly. And we went international this time from Canada. Alan! 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 There wasn't four Alans, just one Alans. Jim. No. Tim. Jared. From Europe, we have Mr. Potter, uh, Jesper, Magnus, Pitt, me. And from Australia, we have B, Ethan, and Jeanette. I think her name is Jeanette. Enough of that. Now, on to the subject. I wanted to talk to you something a little bit serious. This is- <laughs> Bring it down. Bring it down a notch. Because we've been doing too much laughing. And in this episode, I'm going to say no laughing. Oh, okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah. no, no laughing. You're not allowed. <laughs> I already, I already failed. Already failed. So let's just bring it down a little bit. We were given a grant by the National Swingers Education Fund of America and Canada and Puerto Rico. <laughs> and we just want to be able to spread some some knowledge. That's what we do. Hashtag sex coach. Hashtag swinger coach. Hashtag lifestyle university. Lifestyle university. I like that. This is something that we hear often. You and I had talked about it. One of the things that we always have a, a talk about is your ability to have orgasms. Right. <laughs> or inability. Or the inability to have orgasms. Yeah. And what you often forget is that you are in the majority, not the minority. About 30% of women reach orgasm, I think, uh, clitorally, uh, even lower uh, vaginally, less than 30%. So so there's a huge number of women who, who can't have an orgasm just from penetrative sex. All the people you hear from usually are the women that are talking about, you know, how easily they come. It yeah. makes everybody else feel crazy. One of the other things on the male side is either erectile dysfunction or the use of Viagra, mm -hmm. right? Most guys at some point experience some form of ED, mm -hmm. but the, the things that you hear are usually like, I'm always hard. I'm always ready. Um, it's a lot of virility. It's a lot of macho. And right, right. It's sometimes even hard for guys to- No pun intended. Yes. It is sometimes hard for guys to even say, I take a Viagra. Sometimes you'll say, hey, you want a Viagra? And they go, I don't need that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's like, I, I don't really need Advil either, <laughs> but it helps. <laughs> I mean, I don't need it, right? But yeah. It, and I, I just think that's one of the things in the lifestyle that we deal with always is these how you present yourself and what you actually are. And in this particular segment, we're talking about sex life, sex drive, libido, and all of that stuff. So I have to say that I believe that most people believe or would believe that you and I are always fucking. Yes. Not even- We other, used to hear that at, in the pool all the time. But not even other people. But even when we're at home alone, we're just always fucking. Yeah. Right. And then one of the things that you often hear when you're at, whether it's uh, lifestyle parties or hotels, wherever it is, take over. You have some people who are like, oh, we don't stop. And that may be true. It, it may actually be true <laughs> that they have sex seven times a day. In fact, we know one couple that just doesn't stop. But there are couples out there like us who do not have sex all the time. Right. There's this this sort of weird stigma about a good sex life. Like, what is a good sex life? I think it's important to know two things. Not everybody has sex the same amount of time. Not libidos don't always match up and a good sex life is if you are happy and you are satisfied in that sex life i want to know what your thoughts are in this realm because we know people on either side i think some people feel guilty if here's where this line starts to blur we have a sex life that is mediocre but then that sex life starts to pour over into the lifestyle right so when that line starts to become gray when your sex life starts to become the lifestyle and the lifestyle starts to become your sex life there's a feeling of guilt that washes over people like they want to keep the two absolutely separate we have our sex life oh. and then we have our lifestyle and our sex life is not connected to the lifestyle and the lifestyle is not connected to our personal sex life. So once you wind up in a situation where it's like, we could go through phases, you and I, where we're like, 
well, we're not really having that much sex right now, but there's a party next week and we could fuck four times in four days. Right. Now you go, well, I feel a little strange. Not I, we don't. Mm -hmm. I feel a little strange because we're not having as much sex at home, but when we go out, we tend to have more sex. Well, that's an interesting perspective because there's a lot of people who always talk about, well, that was really hot, you know, when we were with this person and that person. And then they, we kept talking about it over and over in bed. Are you just talking about physical sex? No, I'm talking about when the scale, like what you just described is completely normal. And yes, that is both part of the lifestyle and that is both part of your personal sex life. If you bring it home and you recall it to one another, right. that's great. But what happens when the scale starts to tip the other way? When you go, we have our best sex. We have a better time when we were out. My wife is more turned on. My husband is more turned on in the lifestyle world than they are in my own personal bedroom. Is that something that you should feel guilty about? Is it something that you should worry about? And my opinion is absolutely not. No. I think I would absolutely agree with you. My original perception would be that we all go through different cycles, just like the different types of people that we find attractive. Those are constantly changing. And I think when you're at home, that there's certain times that you are really connected and you have really great sex together at home. And then there's other times, like you said, where your, your libidos don't necessarily line up. And that that may help the being in the lifestyle with your libido and it may bring out a better sex life, but it doesn't mean that the sex is better with other people mm -mm. just because it's outside of your bedroom. It's still your sex life. The, the lifestyle is always still your sex life, right. whether it's outside of your bedroom or not, in my perspective. But there's a compartment. There is a caveat to this where I say it's not that it is not a blanket statement that you say, yeah, you could go and not have sex at home for a while and then go to a swinger party and have have sex every day and feel okay about it. It's not it's not a blanket statement that I want right, to make right, because right. there's there's a very important piece there that I want to get to that I think is the difference. Before I say that, one of the things that I think people forget is one of the things that we all get into this lifestyle for is to connect one another and to have a good time. There is something about the adrenaline adrenaline rush that you get, the hunting that people get. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, there's something in that, that that you cannot get with your partner anymore. You just can't. Right. Us after, how long have we been together? Like 77 years. Yeah. A long time. There's a part of it that you will never get back. You'll never get back that that adrenaline rush that you would with a couple that's flirting with you, making you feel certain ways. You're never going to get that back. And there's nothing wrong with admitting that. There's nothing wrong with saying, I have a different sexuality level outside in the lifestyle than I do here in this bedroom. Yeah, Not I because I'm bored of you. There's a wonderful part of the sex life that you have in your bedroom that you can't have at the lifestyle. This is where I want to get into this caveat. There is a preparation and a, a stage that you set when you go on into the lifestyle, which can be very exciting, but it also can be a pain in the ass. Like what kind of stage do you mean? You have to present your best look your best, smell your best, be okay, ready, okay. be shaven, waxed, be ready, no. have your Viagra, Pe be on point. And all, yeah, right. Okay. There is a lot of discomfort that comes with that as well. With that excitement, you have a lot of a lot of things that you have to prep for. Just like when you were first starting to date or be together with your spouse. It's exactly. But to reach that level of, uh, I'm not showering and kind of smelly, but mm -hmm. I'm going to fuck you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not completely, I didn't, like you were like, oh, I didn't shave. It's like, oh, sorry, just just bend over and just look the other way. And then I'm going to go to sleep. There's a comfort in that that is completely different. Yeah. And to be able to separate the two as as two beautiful things is really, really important. I know that I act differently in the lifestyle world when I'm having sex than I do with you. And I don't want to give away my secrets, but I may be more vocal, <laughs> right? I'm yeah. a little more vocal in the lifestyle. Those yeah. are things that I do. I also last longer in the lifestyle <laughs> because I have to, because I don't want to, I don't want to embarrass the shit out of myself. So I have to control myself. But there's sometimes with you, I'm like, whoops, well, that was over in two minutes. Sorry. It's like, that's fine. That's I'm a fine. horrible lover. Here's your vibrator. I'm going to go get a Twix bar. 
in the lifestyle, it's like everyone spent like the entire night, all their theme costumes, everything, just to go home with Richard and Lauren. And yeah. Then, like, and well, then I, it's like over in three minutes, they're like, well, that was a fucking wrong, yeah, I don't wrong do that. gamble. But you could very well look at me. You, If you were a petty person, you could very well look at me and go, hey, uh, Richard, so what's the deal with you being able to fuck like a porn star out in the lifestyle world and I get a minute and a half of your best. Can you can you maybe put a little more effort in with mama? Yeah. Is that possible if you were a petty person? And if I was a petty person or if I was on a different level, I might be able to be like, hey, you know, you you make a lot more sounds. You <laughs> act a little bit different in the bedroom. But I know that there's a performance that goes with it. I know there, there's also not only a performance, not saying it's all fake, but there is an excitement that goes with it that I don't want to, I don't want to keep you back bound up and say, well, you have to act the same way in our bedroom when we're alone as you do in the lifestyle because that's not fair. Right. Right. Because it's 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 unattainable. That excitement that I get if I'm in an orgy, like let's say I wind up in the, this this room with six awesome people and it's just an awesome time. There's an excitement there that I'm never going to get when I'm with you alone in the bedroom yeah. after 70 something years that we've been together. Yeah. The caveat that I would say to all of this is there's one very important piece that we should all remember. And that is no matter what your sex life is on the other side, you have to take that time to make sure, and this is really, really important, no matter what your sex life is, make sure your partner feels wanted, sexy, and attractive and coveted. Even if you have to try extra hard, that to me is when things start going into the darker area where you go, I'm just going to completely not try anymore yeah. in the bedroom with you alone, but I'm going to go out uh, at 110% out in the lifestyle. Egos are very, very fragile. And you have to remind yourself, I have to give my partner that ego boost. And I am guilty of it with you. You're guilty of it with me. I'm sitting here nodding like, I'm so guilty of that. They can feel you nodding. Um, but <laughs> it is something that you got to keep in mind. You got to maintain that you're hot. I want you. You turn me on. Because mm -hmm. I don't doubt that you don't turn me on. But if you start to let your head go in the wrong direction, it starts to get very, very dark. So it's just something that I wanted to talk about with you. Uh, and after my 20 minute introduction, how do you feel about that? <laughs> I guess my thoughts would be, I guess really the same thing that the workshop that we do is to just to take that time to look at your partner and say, Hey, you know, you are special. You are sexy. I appreciate you. And if that's by coming in two minutes with them, then that's fine. But just make sure that they know that you still find them attractive and that, you know, you don't just go to bed every night. Even, you know, there's times I'm like, do you want a blow job? Can I blow you? I want your cock in my mouth. And you're like, no, not really. Even if there are comments that or actions that it doesn't even have to be an action every one of the time, but maybe a reaction. There are certain times if you say to me on a Tuesday afternoon or something, whatever, you're like, oh, God, you look so hot in that position that you're in right now. Uh -huh. That goes a long way, right? If you say, oh, God, looking at your ass right now is just fucking and turning me on. That goes a long way because we generally objectify a lot of people in this lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I think you need to sh to share some of the objectification in your own relationship. It's only fair. But right? aren't we talking about actual sex lives? That's just words of affirmation. Now you could be getting into a completely different subject. I mean, not to be, uh, say, deny you and say no to what you just said. Well, but I mean, as far as the sex life go, if you're, if you're going to keep them separate or make them separate, I would not forget to try harder. Like, I should try harder to not come in two minutes when I'm with you because it's the lazy thing to do. I should make sure to get out of breath, <laughs> right? Because I get out of breath when, when I'm in a lifestyle, <laughs> but I don't get out of breath when I'm with you because right. I'm like, well, that's too hard. <laughs> I'm going to do that. I'll take bottom position again. <laughs> you know? I, yeah. And that for the, for me, I could be like, don't be the whatever they starfish or whatever they call it. Yeah. yeah or, so you, you have to take those moments where you're, you make that extra effort yeah. a little bit to, to make sure that the person feels coveted. Can I, can I, can I use that word coveted? Yeah, I absolutely. If, 
Um, for the people out there who your your sex life at home is blurring into the lifestyle and your lifestyle is blurring into your sex life, don't stress about it. Man. We're all in this to have a really good time. There's nothing that says that they have to be completely separate. If you're a couple that's like, yeah, we, we only fuck when we're at parties. That's our best sex life. Then that is your best sex life. Fuck everybody else. If you have sex seven <laughs> times- Literally. Yeah. If you have sex seven times a day and you go to parties and you don't have sex with anybody, then that is your, your best sex life. A great sex life is very, very relative to what makes you happy and what makes makes you satisfied with the caveat. Don't forget to mentally satisfy your partner in the same way that they're being satisfied in the lifestyle with those ego boosts and feeling like a rock star every once in a while. You don't want to give that up to your partner. Don't want to give that up because the moment that your partner, man or woman, feels like you are a better lover out there than you are at home, that's when resentment will will start to build. And if you hear people who are like, oh, we just can't keep our hands off together and you're thinking, in your head, ah, oh, my husband and I aren't like that. I feel weird now. Don't feel weird. They're probably fucking lying. <laughs> So just remember, people love to present different things, whether it's with the Viagra, whether it's with the orgasms or however they perform. People love to present what they think you would think is going to be. Exactly. They they want to present their image of you. It, it Life is Facebook, right? Yeah. The photo that they're going to put up with their caption, that is that is what everybody does in life. They do the same, same thing. And it is, they're both rooted in insecurity insecurities to, yeah to a certain extent yes yeah. so that is what i have to say about that you're welcome take the time to make them special and i still believe that doing something like the workshop even if it's just what once a month is something that's like just sit down take the time to make each other feel special a lot of people do date nights or whatever and yeah and that's how our workshop worked out being magical yeah right? and it was an accident it's not like we came up with this plan yep. like this is what we need to give people yeah we backed into it we always say we backed into the success of it because it was so simple right? yeah and it does take that time and it does make you feel special yeah and it does make you feel like I remember why I fucking love this person because I love their touch and I, I just everything about them. Yep. Nobody else out there that turns me on more than you do that might not show when I'm at a party hitting on someone really hard and working <laughs> overtime to get her to take her top off. Uh, it may not seem like that, but it is actually true. So I know that. I know you know that, but I want them to know that. I yeah, want everybody else true. to know that. It the lesson you should learn is uh, most people are full of shit. <laughs> what I want. And people work really hard in the lifestyle. You're at home. You don't work so hard. You're seeing the best clothes. You're seeing the best hairdo. You're seeing the best shoes. You're seeing the best performances. You're seeing the best body grooming. You are seeing the best personalities, it's the best sense of humor. America. You are seeing their Facebook page with their Facebook caption. And we all know at home, we are not our Facebook page. Yeah, we, we are. No. Tell us who brought this wonderful segment. Go through them quickly. More Patreons. The PYT, Terry, K. Jones, JMC, Lucy, Matthew, Christopher, Alex D., Krusty McClown, Reggie, Jerry, Stephanie, Chet, Alan and Michelle, Miriam, Jen, Jeremy, uh, Mr. Beard, Chuck, Rick B., Schmitty23, Dexter2714, Rodney, Jim, Jennifer, Joshua, Bob D., SP, Amber, That One Low Life. Is that all of them? That's it. No, all right, everybody. Thank you so much for, for joining Patreon. We know it was a bargain for you, and you're welcome. <laughs> all right, Lauren, so in this next segment, we stole two people from Desire, and we took them out around town, and uh, they're wonderful people. We've known them for about five years mm -hmm. or so. We got into this discussion about hall passes, and we wanted to say thank you to these two wonderful folks. We did have to disguise slightly his voice because uh, he has one of those special jobs where you can not know who he is <laughs> and uh that's it so we want you to enjoy sit back here they are all right uh here we are sitting around in our bedroom i am still hot how are you lauren i'm good i'm actually ready to record it and i'm smiling <laughs> 
<laughs> That's a good sign. I know. <laughs> you are in a really odd position. <laughs> My headphone cord is like extra short. <laughs> I'm aghast. <laughs> I We have two guests here right now. Yes. But I wanted to catch up with you first. They're going to sit over there and I haven't seen them for quite some time. And I want to give you a little bit of backstory about these people. I want to have sex with them. That's most of the backstory that you need to know. Now, we took them to lunch, but before we went to lunch, we took them to a hotel that we in Mexico <laughs> that we were hoping to take over, not like a coup or anything like that. <laughs> not like we're going to invade the hotel, but like for a takeover in November that we're going to do here in Playa del Carmen where mm-hmm. everybody can be naked and have sex and sing, do whatever you want. We don't right. really care. Right. We said, listen, tell us what you think of this place. Yeah. They came, they saw, and they said, the place is, yeah. <laughs> that's uh that's, that's the reaction we got did you like it they said yeah. they said if you guys it's are, good if you guys are doing it we'll be there if you're gonna be there it's great would i ever stay here probably not yeah and that's sort of what we're stuck with but it is on the beach yeah it does have a pool plus it has four jacuzzis i don't want to oversell that they're all two feet deep <laughs> But the point is, is it has a rooftop. We could be naked up there. We could be naked at the pool. We'll make it really fun because we're going to bring people in and do stuff. And it got the stamp of approval by these two. If you knew them and they vouched for it, you'd be like, oh yeah, we'll be there. Yeah, their stamp means a lot. But you don't know them. So it means nothing to anybody, (laughs) really. So let me give you the backstory about these two. Apparently what I found out today is we met a long time ago. And the first time we met, I was a dick. (laughs) That's what I learned today. I know. Now, this isn't new news. We all know that I'm kind of a dick, <laughs> right? I only have fond memories. Apparently, they they are harboring <laughs> they're harboring resentment. <laughs> I remember sitting t- sitting at the at the bar with them, and then I was like, "I really want to have sex with you," and she was like, "I really want to have sex with you too." And then we never got to do it. Mm-hmm. And then they came back again. And I think somebody somebody got sick or someone died. I don't really even Yeah, there was this, some sort of sickness. I don't remember who it was. They're here, by the way. I don't, we don't have to speculate. Well, should we draw the screen open so we can see them, the curtain? Not yet. Okay. After the hotel thing, we grabbed some lunch at La Serena. And then we came back here, right, to the new place. And they are, I will say, officially the first people that have been to our new place not the first people in the world but the first people (laughs) who aren't here to fix something yeah who aren't here to fix something (laughs) or to drop off water or collect the rent so i'm going to introduce them now i want everyone to know that we have not had sex or have even gotten naked or have even inappropriately touched one another in any way and we've known them i think for five years is that true yeah who wants to speak first you can raise your hand oh they're pointing at each other (laughs) Which I was going to say that they're super, super intelligent people, but all right, sir, I will start with you. Is that okay? Well, do I have permission to speak? The ground rules are very strict here. (laughs) There's no looking at Richard. Yes. (laughs) We'll be passing out a conch. How are you today? Let me start off by saying that. How are you today? We tore you away from the Desire Pearl Resort Hotel and Spa in Puerto Morelos, and you're here in Puerto Morelos. <laughs> How are you feeling today? Once you put the gun down, I think- uh, It got less scary. <laughs> yeah, it got a little more appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> Now, just in, in a few words, how would you describe the hotel that we went and saw today that we were going to storm? Would you stay there with us in November? Of course I would. Now, do you remember meeting us when I did not remember meeting you, apparently, back in 2016? Yeah, I think that was the time where I said, hello, you know, and I said my name, and you're like, you're welcome. And I was I was, I was was hoping for a little more dialogue at that point. <laughs> I didn't give it to you. Is that true? No, but you wanted to give it to her. All right. I want to talk to her for a second. She is absolutely gorgeous. She has stunning eyes and stunning features, and she is wicked wickedly smart, really, really funny, and she watches a lot of TV. Now, when you first met me in 2016, did you see me and think, yeah, I want to get on top of that? (laughs) Yes. I don't want you to elaborate, so thank you for the short (laughs) answers. You're not testifying. (laughs) All right, so the first time we met, uh, we ignored you. Well, Lauren didn't ignore you. Lauren didn't. You did. Well, she's nice. I'm not nice. I'm a social butterfly. But then the second time we met, you remember that time? When we just talked movies? and Yeah, at the bar. Mm-hmm. Right. Did you know that at that point that I was infatuated with you? No. You didn't know? Even by me saying, I love you? <laughs> no, that didn't give it away. I, 
I feel like I, I set some serious vibes. I mean, we 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 exchanged numbers. We had to because I have your number, and then I had your number for the second time that I think you were coming, or that was yeah. the third time. The second time you actually forgot who I was. Oh, that's normal. Oh, God. <laughs> that's normal. But there's something that you do that is is very different. I don't know if you did it this time because I haven't been to the Desire property in quite some time. You used to always show up at the resort and have a little flower in your hair. Did you wear a flower while you were there this time? I did. Like a black flower in memory of Richard and Lauren? <laughs> Actually, I did. You did? Yep. In your name. Thank you. Was there a time <laughs> that we met? Was there a time that we met that somebody got sick or something? I think it was you. I got sick? Yeah, because we had to step in and help with the class. Is that true? You did? What happened? Which class were we doing? Yoni or Lingham? I think it was Lingham. We were just on display in front of everybody. Oh, yeah. So you were a stunt cop. You were yeah. stunt Was cop. I even there or no? No. Oh, I wasn't even there. So I was really sick. Yeah, really sick. My dear lady, like you're here with us now. Would would you at any point, because I had told you, look, if, if we're going to fuck this time, let me know because I have to shower. At no point did you say, Richard, shower, because we're going to get naked. Are you one of those people that just doesn't know how to start? Oh, yeah. So how do you like to start? Like, do you have a swinging life at home where you are at home? Uh, no, not much of one. Not much at all. So the only time you sort of play around is when you come to uh, Cancun here. Yeah. yeah I yeah. mean, you're both looking at each other like, I don't know, what do you do on your <laughs> off time? <laughs> You say you go to work, but I'm not sure. I don't know. Tell me. Uh, we, have, uh, we do have hall passes that we take advantage oh, of. Oh, you do? Yep. Oh, my God. I didn't know this. Now, this is something that we don't do. Yes. So, when was your last hall pass? A few weeks ago. Really? Is that somebody that you know or that you visit frequently? It's somebody I know, but we don't see each other very often. How long have you known him or her? Him. Him. How long have you known him? A few years. And where did you meet him? Work. Oh. oh, and did you immediately tell your husband like, hey, there's a guy at work that I would do? Well, we travel a lot, so we only grant hall passes when we're not home with each other. Again, did you <laughs> say to him immediately, hey, there's a guy at work that I would fuck? Uh, yeah, that, that might have gone. I, I'm curious, like, what do you do on a hall pass? Like, I don't know if this Wait. is the appropriate time to ask it, but that's my question. You can remember it because you're good at remembering stuff. Okay. Okay. What right. was your question? Like how do you <laughs> like how do you do a hall pass? Do you like oh, right, go right. out to dinner yeah, yeah. or do you just set up a fuck date or how right. does that work? Are okay. you sir? When was the last time you were in a hall pass? Yeah, it was about a few weeks ago. So about the same time? Yeah. Was it on the same night or no? Uh no. Now does your hall pass and your hall pass do they know each other? No. That would be weird. That would be weird. <laughs> So how does a hall pass work? She says, hey, you want to watch Stranger Things tonight? And you're like, can't do that. Uh, I got a date. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's it's always when one is traveling. So mm -hmm. she's going to be traveling and maybe I'll be uh, at, at home. It's a matter of, was there someone maybe I met on one of the uh, websites or, or not that uh, I want to meet? And so if I, the permission is granted, then we'll go meet them. And then we work it in a veto style or right before the other person can say no. You know, go home, come home. And normally for me, it's it's not a it's not a one on one. It's you like to be with a couple, so you're like a stud man. Yes, I. You can say you're a stud. It's okay. Let me ask you this: What makes you veto? What is something that be like that is not going to happen? I don't think either of us has thrown a veto out yet. But you give them the chance to. So you present them. You say, this is exhibit A. Do I have your permission? While she's traveling or before she leaves? Variable. I mean, if the person she may come in contact with is is going to be there, then it's kind of a, a heads up that there there may be a hall pass in play. And then right before the play, there's usually a message that will say, yep, it's going to happen or it's not. And that's when you, you veto or you don't. I mean, maybe she or he is not in the right frame of mind or she's right, or he's right. feeling it's a little vulnerable or, that night. I and gotcha. it's like, you know what? I just need to talk to you tonight because I had a bad day. Yeah, okay. I and get it. And she usually says, well, suck it up because <laughs> <laughs> mama needs some loving. They're very connected. So I'm having a problem understanding what the right. emotional connection is about. My dear, you only go with just a single. You're never in like, hey, by the way, honey, uh, I'm getting gangbanged tonight by <laughs> 17 dudes at a theater no my limit 16 <laughs> all right good enough but is it usually just one-on-one -on -one? normally it is yeah normally so has there been a, a couple situation or has there been a gangbang situation there has been one couple situation and that didn't go well i'm guessing it wasn't bad it's just 
it wasn't great. Because she was a little too much to deal with, right? You know what I'm saying. <laughs> she, all right, we all know. You can say she it. She was a Karen. She she got a little jealous, and you're like, not. I'm not dealing with that shit anymore. Uh, actually, I just haven't seen them since. I mean, I work with a variety of people, so it's very rare that I run into the same person multiple times. So you only play with people you work with? Well, that's just how I meet a ton of people. Just, I mean, I don't normally have an opportunity otherwise. So you're kind of pulling vanilla people more and you're more and the man is working off of a website who are definitely lifestyle people yeah i mean for me it's more guys who want to see their wife with somebody Uh or their girlfriend or whoever it may be yeah i feel like you're cheating but you're doing the real work (laughs) out there So, so so let me ask you this in your world sir it's pretty easy you find somebody on a website and you're like boop you hit them with a like whatever (laughs) You, my dear, you have to explain, I'm married. Yes. And my husband's, how do you broach that conversation? How does that even begin? How do you introduce I that? I love that. Do you want some Starbucks? Uh, by the way. And by the way, <laughs> grope me at any point. <laughs> Here I am. I walk into work. I'm going to pretend that I'm a worker. You ready? So uh-huh. pretend, do your best. I want you to pretend <laughs> oh, that we- gosh. <laughs> Come on, you got to get your character. Mm-hmm. You ready? Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> Uh, I see your inbox is full. <laughs> uh, no, you. Uh, all right, I'm gonna do this for real. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do this for real. Okay, you ready? Um, I mean, where, where does, where should I like? I, I mean, it really just depends on the situation. Normally, give me a situation. Um, Watch me. I, I'm a trained thespian. I'm sitting at a bar having a cocktail and pick up a conversation. Okay, you ready? You live around here? No. No, really. No, you're you- here for the conference. You got to start like, oh, what what company you work for? Did you go to the exhibit? Excuse me, lady. I'm talking today? to a woman at the bar here. <laughs> I don't right. know you. Do you need another tequila? <laughs> no, we're good right now. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm so sorry about that waitress. She's just nosy as shit. <laughs> but she's really hot. Yeah, she is smoking hot, but she's fixated on this fake conference. <laughs> I mean, I would sleep with her. And that's how the conversation normally starts. Okay, oh, I get it. Oh, see how she works. I get it. In. Oh, really? But I noticed you have a ring on. Does your husband know you're here? He does know I'm here. And he's okay with it? He is. So how's that work? That's a question, by the way, that you probably get a lot. So how's that work? We'll text him or call him and kind of give him what's happening and and he says you're gonna text your your man right now and we're gonna go where back to your room yeah i feel like you're gonna steal my organs that's what i feel like this <laughs> well then don't come back with me <laughs> okay so is that is that something that that is part of your turn on knowing that she's out there is that something that turned you on thinking she's out there tonight getting filled with somebody who's probably better hung than i am <laughs> Well, first of all, you have the worst pickup lines in the world. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't really need pickup lines. She does. This is why I just do websites and swinger functions. I don't need pickup lines. <laughs> no, but in, in all seriousness, it's um, her being in her element, her feeling sexy and feeling empowered and going with the moment and enjoying the moment. That's where my center is happiest when it comes to that kind of scenario does it turn you on when she when you see her the next time after that is it a turn off for you because like some guys are turned on knowing that their partner was just with another person and they sort of want that sloppy second feel (laughs) is that are you into that (laughs) <laughs> like I can still smell him on you. Get closer to me. Well, Mr. Wordsmith, I would say, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, well, yeah, there, there, there is something attractive about someone else coveting uh, someone that you love so much. Now, maybe not everyone's going to find that. But no, it, it, it's, it's a turn on. Now, the question and the hard part is whether I can get her to describe that. Uh, with words to me as to what happened. And this gets to the difference of who's verbal and who's not. Oh, so she doesn't want to. So in other words, now now we're going to role play. You ready? I'm coming home. Okay. Oh, are, are you playing with him or me? I'm with him. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm coming home. Right. I'm, I'm you now. <laughs> okay, you ready? Hey, baby. I'm going to be what you want. This is what he wants, by the way. Hey, baby. Do you want to go in the bed? Come on. Answer my question. Why are you laughing? <laughs> baby, are you high? <laughs> baby. <laughs> Come on, sit in Are bed. <laughs> I never knew what I wanted until now. Listen, it's not over yet. It's not over yet. You want this. You want, oh, he fucked me so good. He fucked me so hard. Now, ask me questions. Ask me questions. <laughs> Come on, do it. 
I'm not sure if I'm good at this role no, playing. You better be. That's what you want out of her. <laughs> Come on, ask me questions. What would you want to ask her? I think the operative person is her in this case. <laughs> so what would you, you just said? I want her to describe. Stuff. No, no, it, yeah, it, no. It, it's yeah, it's true. It, it, it would be the the prompting statement by me being able to ask a lot of follow up questions in, de- <laughs> in details. Go on. What is the prompting question? I think the prompting statement would be: This is what I did. And oh, I'm the prompting statement. Yes. Oh, I went back to the room and took off his pants and I sucked his cock for like 20 minutes. He almost came and I wouldn't let him come. And then he took me from behind and entered me anally. And I know how much you hate that. (laughs) But I just had to try. Oh, now come here and lay on top of me and call me Bruce. (laughs) Is that sort of in the direction? Yes, that's what he's looking for. Do you ask questions? She's like, no, it was good. It was great. So why can't you give him the dirty details? Because I'm just not very good at that. So try, but you can try. I do. And we just end up laughing. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) What about the other way around? Do you want to hear what he went through? Um, no, not normally. I just want to know he had a good time and <laughs> they weren't crazy and they're not going to show up on our doorstep in a day. You had fun? All right. You want to watch Stranger Things? Cool. <laughs> Is that- you used a condom? Awesome. Great. Awesome. Did you set the coffee or no? <laughs> I was getting in the mindset like I, I was following the journey of sitting in a, you know, sitting in a thing because it, it reminded me of, of, of being on shoots. You're out and you're at a bar, you're going to have one glass of wine, then you go up and go to sleep. And there were always conference people, right? And I just... Used, horny conference people. Yeah. And I just they're like, always horny. Well, because they're away from their spouses, right? And they're mm. looking to cheat almost. Well, this isn't cheating though. No, not her. But I don't know if she's with married people or if she's with oh, only that's single a people. Great question. So honey. it's like for you like me, Diane Sawyer. Yeah, listen. Uh, so it's that thing of having the power. You know, let them roll their spiel or whatever, and then the, having the power to be like, no, I'm with someone, I'm engaged, or I'm just I'm having one drink and going out to bed. To me, it's the power that's the turn on. I don't think I could get wet and turned on by actually fucking someone else without you there. I don't think I could do the fantasy, but it is a turn on to go back in time and think about that when people used to come up and approach you and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you here for? I'm here working. Because I never said, I'm a model. I never said, I never pulled that card. Would have been the first thing I said. (laughs) Yeah, not me. I always (laughs) played it low key. I found the empowerment a turn on. Yeah, like I was getting turned on by going through that journey. But then it's like, once you go to the elevator, then it's like, I would lose all of that. It would just be like, an, I gotta I'd be, be like, I'm out. I'm out, Jeff. I got to be honest with you, honey. That's sort of you now. I mean, you get. <laughs> you, <laughs> no, it's true. Your game, your flirting game is so on point. And then sometimes we'll make it to the room with people and you go into a corner and you're like, I'm so nervous. I don't know what to do. <laughs> it's true. I know that you really enjoy sort of batting that. I do cat toy around but when push comes to shove and it's time to write that check you start to get really nervous because your security lies in picking them up putting them in that net but then you get feel insecure in bed is there something about the anonymity of it for you or is it the thrill of the hunt what was that show with homeland right and she used to go down in the beginning season i only watched one season of it because it sucked and then <laughs> uh, she used to go down into the bar and she used to put a wedding ring on her finger oh yeah so i thought it was a great touch a great touch to add to to the character because and someone asked her why do you you know why do you do that and she said because they're only looking for one night they're not looking looking for a relationship so it attracts the right guy do you ever have that thought where you sort of present your ring because that's who you're trying to attract i wouldn't say i present it but it is the hunt for me most of it where does it fall when that person is also married but they're not in a relationship that is open do you do you allow that ethics or do you say that's his side of the street I, I'm not worried about that. Well, normally it's just with single people, so I don't have to worry about the messy side of it later. And we don't exchange numbers or really do much. So you as got- far as like maintaining contact afterwards. But what if one of these people are married? Do you override that moral compass and say, that is not my responsibility. That is, that's his thing. If he wants to tell his wife, he can tell his wife. If it's with the female, I will. What do you mean by that? Uh, well, if a female is married and 
she is exploring her bisexual side, I have no problem. When you go down to that bar, you will possibly go home with male or female. That's true? That is correct. So you're just being greedy. Yes. <laughs> I love it. That has happened before. You've picked up women in, in a bar. Yes, I have picked up a woman. What is, what is your type of, of woman? Is it like tall... <laughs> Why would you ask that? Well, because, because, or is well, it I mean, like just a- like with guys, I don't, looks are a turn on, but I, I'm more attracted to intellect and uh, a good conversation will help along the way. So I don't have a type. Is a standard hookup for you in this world, even at Desire, kind of boring for you? I mean, our, our, our preference well, is to be together and yeah, explore other couples together. That would be like me and Lauren if I had showered. But you did cut your toenails. I did cut my toenails <laughs> for you. That is a true story. I did. Yeah. So hall passes, they're just like an added thing that we do if we're going to be gone for weeks at a time. So we're not home to see each other. But we prefer to play together, which is why we like coming to resorts so much. I think the oddest thing about it, you know, although it's only been on occasion, it actually has extinguished any kind of jealousy that kind of goes along with the entire lifestyle. And I I can't pinpoint why that is. I would never endorse that that would be the case for everyone. It actually has kind of taken the temperature down a notch when it comes to emotions that can that can come percolating to the top when when being in this. uh, How long have you guys been in the lifestyle? It's a rather inartful term, and I'm not saying that, that you used it inartfully. I'm just—it's a very it's so broad. I, I would say we've been practicing, um, probably only a couple of years. Yeah, I mean, if you put exhibition in it, then it's longer. I mean, Hold on, what is exhibition? What do you mean? Does that mean just fucking in front of people, like on your deck at home, or public parks? What are we talking about here? <laughs> Mostly, I, I get the pharmacy when you're waiting for your COVID shot. And <laughs> it gets boring. <laughs> you're welcome for the show. <laughs> your sexual lifestyle world consisted of just having sex in front of people. That's where it started. That's where it always starts. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we say that it's on the spectrum. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's in the spectrum. To us, it's all part of the lifestyle. And if you stay that way for the rest of your marriage, then that is in the lifestyle. That That's okay. You don't have to penetrate anybody to, to be in the lifestyle. You're cooler if you do, but you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, you're way cooler. Yeah, but there were always people who were like, "No, we're not in the lifestyle." I mean, we do oral stuff with people, but they're like, "Wait, what? No, you don't know how this works." <laughs> That's not how this works. My friend to you, sir, did you ever say this statement? Come right home after you're with him and I want to eat the cum out of your box. Have you ever said that to her? <laughs> no, I have not. Because she's you- traveling. She'd have to get on a plane and then you smell like a plane and it's like 18 hours later. And- but would you be into him eating your box after a man had just fucked you and spread his seed inside of you? No, but don't make that face. It's it's a part of life. Well, normally he has a condom, so there is no That's spreading nice. of any kind of seed. In my world, you're bareback everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> how I'm picturing it. Don't ruin my Okay, picture. I'm so sorry. Yeah, you bareback everyone. Yeah. I also love that you call it the box. <laughs> right, well... Well, I'm a wordsmith. So, <laughs> so, all right, if you came home and he said that, how would you feel about that? I'd probably just giggle. Is there a part of you that that enjoys like her being a dirty whore? No. I, <laughs> I, I, I love it. Like if Lauren's a dirty whore, I'm like, oh, you dirty whore. <laughs> it's such a turn on to me. Uh, no, no, I, I, I can't say that's it. I mean, it may sound dumb but i just i love how empowered she is because it, it's it's like she comes back from this hunt and she got something out of it and she there's there's a little bit of a subtle chip on her shoulder about it and to me that her empowerment is actually a, a turn on so i mean so yeah like one leads to the other it's you know cause and effect but no i mean to put it in those graphic and and kind of shakespeare like words that you used <laughs> uh no I've, I've never i've never said it that way have you ever been with a couple and have brought her back with that couple Uh, I'm going to come back for an encore and I'd love to bring my wife with me. And they're like, you're married? (laughs) (laughs) No, uh, you know, I I think it's actually easier for her in those uh, ventures that she has uh, versus me. I mean, you're a single guy in that situation. I mean, even though you're married, you're still playing the role of a single guy. And that is not easy in this world. Well, yeah. And then you have to filter the crazy factor. Not getting to know people well enough, it's almost easier just to say one and done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So, but I mean, who knows? Stay tuned. I have never been in the situation where I have been with a couple as a single guy where I've just, hey, come over, me and my wife want to be with you. I don't know how you how you handle that pressure. Like to me, the performance anxiety that goes along with that to me is mind bending. I wouldn't be able to do it. I wouldn't knock on the door. Like she is <laughs> my rock. Like I'd be like, I'm not getting through this without you showing up alone to face a couple that takes a lot of confidence on your part that's i'm impressed we've worked on it you know we we, we use mannequins first <laughs> no uh no it, it's uh I, I guess it falls into the fantasy realm i mm-hmm. mean you know it's not just like well i'm gonna go out and do a public service you know i'm, I'm here to to make the uh unindulged uh, marriages a little more indulging and uh but you are doing a service and we want to thank you for your service <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your service no, it it, it, it it is fresh, partially because not knowing what someone else likes, not having a baseline for anything. I find that women don't have that much of that anxiety. Like you said, that you have no baseline, you have nothing to go off of. I don't find women suffer from that type of anxiety as much as men do. I feel like for some reason, women, a lot of women, not all, I don't overgeneralize, but walk into a situation and they're like, yes, yeah, sex, I know how to do this. Um is that how you feel or do you ever get insecure? Well, I think that's why I like it so much because it gives me a boost of confidence. And how do you know you've done well? Because <laughs> <laughs> they came on her. Because they come all over your face? Yes. <laughs> how dirty do you get with these men in these dirty rundown motels that you stay at? <laughs> I'm a hotel snob, remember? Oh, yeah. You're a hotel snob. All right. So how, how dirty do you get with these guys? Like, is it sort of you go down on me, I go down on you, a little missionary, and then go home? Or? Yeah, it's pretty standard. It's pretty standard? You're not like, do butt stuff or (laughs) go like... Uh, you come out in in a gimp costume or anything like that. <laughs> Do you wind up in the same cities all the time, or are you always in a different place? It's not normally the same city, but it does tend to sometimes be with the same crowd. So what happens when you run into that person again? Yeah, oh, I run to my room. <laughs> it gets messy when you start. Well, let's exchange numbers. You're married, but didn't you have a great time? And I'm all these great things. So how do you turn them down? Do you just say? Normally, I throw my husband under the bus and say, oh, he vetoed, sorry. You don't say, I used you. You're nothing to me. (laughs) No, I do not tell them that. (laughs) That's what I would say. You mean nothing to me. Now get your clothes and get out. <laughs> when Do you have a preference that you go back to your room? No, I don't have a preference. You could go back to his room. That's fine with you. Sometimes it's easier to escape. Oh, That's because it. then you got to get uh, somebody out of your room correct. as opposed to just, uh, just exiting. That's really smart. In fact, I'm going to take that advice. Always go to somebody else's room because I could just leave. For me, it's easier to push them out. Once we chloroform them, though, the, they, <laughs> the bodies get very heavy. <laughs> On a scale from one to one, what... what uh, <laughs> getting naked with with me where does that fall would you rat oh i have an idea what if we walk out to our kitchen and i pretend i'm at a bar <laughs> do you make good drinks mm. i'll make the drinks i'm the bartender there, you're the nosy bartender <laughs> i am i don't know how he fits into this i mean i think we just text him that's what we do <laughs> He'll stay in here. We'll text him from the bar and, and then he can just lay lay yeah. down in the bed and wait for us that dick is gonna veto us i know it <laughs> I know it. <laughs> Have you guys ever done that thing? Because I've thought about doing this before where you go on a fake date, you drive separately, go to a bar and you try and pick each other up. No, but that would be fun. I think it would be fun. No, it'd be, it'd be terrible. I get shot down all this time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, lightning strikes, well, some people less often than it should, but it doesn't strike all that often. And and for me, I'm not, I'm batting a thousand right now with her and I want to keep it that Aww. way. Aww. Certainly had a really good topic there with that. Thank you, Lauren. You're welcome. Mm, sweaty balls. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you being here. I hope to see you at our takeover in November. We will be there. You better be there. I have to get you back to the hotel. I know you have a lot of people to do and a lot of things to see. I want to thank you so much for being here. You're the first guest to arrive at our house. Do you like it? It's beautiful. I decorated everything. (laughs) It's true, though. (laughs) We hung this yesterday. It's our Google speaker. Just hung it from the ceiling. In macrame. Isn't that cool? It is. What was your thought? I was like, that's very inventive. Thank you guys so much for coming and sharing. I love hearing other people's sides of their sex life. It gives me more chance to think outside the box. Oh, maybe open up my box. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, Lauren, I've had enough of you and pretty much everything else in the world. So <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Okay, baby. <laughs> to the
All right, Lauren, that's about it for us. And that segment was for these last Patreons. Dan, Greg, Jake, Brian, Fabian, Monty, Sexy Blonde and Her Beast, Lippy LaRue, Scott and Maddie, Rourke, and Zero Cools. Zero Cools. You all have hall passes now. We have to close this thing up. But first, first we wanted to talk about Antigua. We are going to be there in a week or so. Mm. We're going to try to send some stuff out podcast-wise. We're going to try to constantly update the party as it's happening is that going to happen probably not (laughs) because we get busy we've been crazy running up to this thing but it's 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 about a week away now we are just about losing our minds at this point as you heard we had floods and we sold a car and we broke a car stuff is breaking so it's it's been pretty crazy around here once thank you so much for staying with us really quickly i wanted to say that i am addicted to a few things this month my newest addiction is (laughs) t-pain If you watch this this documentary of pop music on Netflix and you get to episode two called Auto Tune. Yeah. And just watch T Pain. I've never fallen in love with somebody faster oh my God. than than I have with T Pain. So I am addicted to T Pain now. I have to go look up all of his music and everything that he's ever done. And so then fine. taking a, a very close second or third is Sweet Tooth and Handmaid's Tale. Blessed be the fruit. <laughs> <laughs> are, do you, are you addicted to anything? I'm addicted to the pickle juice that's hot, the hot and sweet ones. You're addicted to pickles a lot. Because I now am using it to make my salad dressing mm-hmm. and tuna salad. Mm-hmm. And it's cutting it, it can cut that mayonnaise out. Well, speaking of addictions, Lauren, tell them a little bit about bikini addiction. If you want a free bikini, book your trip with us. Or you can go to bikiniaddiction.com. Check out their awesome swimwear. Use promo code room 77 get 10 percent off and free shipping for the u.s they have the pretty pretty crystal backs that everyone is wearing now so i know i left stuff out make sure to go to telegram and patreon and our website and antigua and come visit us at our house and bring caulk with you that's it all right i will see you in antigua lauren i won't speak to you again until we are in the deep caribbean and i will be deep inside you peace out and keep fucking that chicken this has been lauren and richard from new with tags <laughs> Just watch me. and that about does it for us for more information visit us at room 77 life.com thanks for stopping by room 77 we had a blast now get your clothes and get out i won't make it easy for you now you got two minutes of my time and i don't really break too easy but i'm worth it i'll slip into your dreams tonight So give me, so give me your all. I'll take it, I'll take it to Mars. Oh, I'll stick like glue inside your mind. Oh, so give me, so give me your all. I'll take it, I'll take it to Mars. Oh, I'll stick like glue inside your mind. Just watch me.